I'm Katie Haynes, or as some of you might know me, the Doctor. You can find me at KatieGangel44 on TikTok, and you have been listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. Keep collecting! They all say who. Welcome back to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast, the podcast that explores the culinary world of Doctor Who collecting and merchandise. I am Larry Van Mersbergen, your host, and I've been collecting Doctor Who for 41 years. I opened the first Doctor Who store in Chicago that exclusively served Doctor Who fans. It was back in 1984, and I called it Bundles from Britain. And we are mentioned in a wonderful book called Red, White, and Who, the Story of Doctor Who in America. And Bundles from Britain lives on page 384. You can find a link to buy this book on the front of our website at DoctorWhoCollectors.com. Everyone should have it on their shelf. We are part of the Direction Point Doctor Who podcast network, and you can find a lot of great podcasts at Direction Point. If you are a Doctor Who podcaster, join today and join the ranks of this podcast, along with Time Streams, Police Box in a Junkyard, the Doctor Who Target Book Club podcast, and Traveling the Vortex. For more information, go to directionpoint.org. And speaking of links, two great resources that I include in every episode because you can start at any place you want to start. Uh, These are great for collectors, starting with the TARDIS Library, which is housed at timelash.com. Sign up for a free account to keep track of your books, your vinyl, your CDs, your videotapes, your vinyl records, I said that already, and other, other things, not all Doctor Who items, but mostly media, anything in print, video, or sound, you can find there. With special thanks to Dan O'Malley. If you need to find something that is unusual, not in that category, or you need to figure out if something actually exists, then you need to go to Howe's Transcendental Toy Box, and you can find that at DoctorWhoToyBox.co.uk. David J. Howe, of course, is a good friend of mine and a good resource for, for all collectors. Uh, you can also find those books, uh, the, Doctor, uh, the Transcendental Toy Box, at Telos Publishing. If you're looking, of course, for great Doctor Who items at great prices, look no further than DoctorWhoStore.com, which is Alien Entertainment. They have what you need and currently running sales on various items. If you live in the Chicago suburbs, you can select free pickup from the store. And while you're there, browse the incredible selection of Doctor Who and other science fiction and media items. They're open Wednesday through Saturday. Visit AlienEntertainment.com for store hours. You can also find other Doctor Who items at Forbidden Planet, which is one of our sponsors. And you don't need to go anywhere except our website at DoctorWhoCollectors.com and select Merchandise Links, find what you want, click through, you will finish your checkout at Forbidden Planet, and they will give us a small cash back for your patronage. Don't forget our own eBay store. We have many Target books listed and some other goodies. All proceeds benefit the podcast. In addition to all the podcasts posted, we also have one of the complete guides to Doctor Who classic hardcover books. We even list some reprints that other publications don't seem to know about. And now that Chicago TARDIS 2021 is way behind us now, we are now moving slowly forward towards Chicago TARDIS 2022, the best Doctor Who convention in the Midwest. And so far, our guests lined up for this include Sylvester McCoy, the seventh Doctor, Fraser Hines. Of course, he comes with every convention ticket, and you'll love talking to him. He was, of course, the longest-running companion on Doctor Who, Jamie McCrimmon, with the second Doctor. You can ask Jason Haig Ellery, the CEO, Yo, Big Finish about Big Finish and new releases, and just recently added was Sophie Aldred, who plays Ace in the classic series and in the final episode of Jodie Whittaker's Doctor. Keep ChicagoTardis.com in your bookmarks and experience the best Doctor Who convention in the Midwest. I am doing something very 
different this year at Chicago TARDIS. Usually people find me, I'm usually in my uh, signature Doctor Who shirts with the classic logo or the, or the p- podcast logo. But I thought I would join the ranks of the cosplayers and I will be appearing as the fifth Doctor with uh, If All Goes Well. Uh, So far, I'm putting that costume together and it's taking quite some time, but I hope I'll have it ready for November. Uh, I am also the official collecting expert for Chicago TARDIS, and you can check out my Doctor Who presentation uh, if you want to visit the 2020... uh, Chicago TARDIS uh, panel, which was a virtual convention. You can find it at the Chicago TARDIS YouTube and page uh, Facebook page streams. You can also find it on our YouTube page, Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. Just go under video playlists and that panel will be there. I'll have more Chicago TARDIS updates as they happen, so tune in. A special thank you to our sponsors. You can also say a thanks to Bags Unlimited Incorporated. They sponsor our collection protection segment. You can get a lot of those collection protection materials at bagsunlimited.com. Another link I'd like to share is, of course, the latest books and uh, offerings from Telos Publications at telos.co.uk. And yes, they do ship to the United States. Uh, Here's what's going on. Um, You can see me present Doctor Who Collecting at Doctoberfest. That's in Indianapolis, Indiana, on Saturday, October 22nd at the Holiday Inn in Camby, Indiana. And, of course, at the Who North America store. Uh, With luck, uh, I am going to be presenting again at Chicago TARDIS 2022 in Weston in Lombard. And hopefully returning to Consinity in Milwaukee in 2023. So watch this space. What's new in the collection? Well, I've had a few things come in uh, since the last episode. I want to, uh, first of all, special thanks to the Corky Queen on eBay. She's known as Kirsten to her friends. Uh, she has a secondhand bookstore in the UK, and I got a nice copy of the Keys of Marinus in hardcover. It is in ex library condition. Uh, needed a small repair to the spine, but it was a good price and I couldn't pass it up. Uh, next, of course, thanks to my longtime friend, Gene Smith. He's the owner and president of Alien Entertainment and my partner from Bundles from Britain. He helped me get the elusive third printing of the Loch Ness Monster in mint condition hardcover with Dust Jacket, the only hardcover book that I know of to get the third printing status. I also got a mint copy of The Sea Devils. So DoctorWhoStore.com for more. Uh, I also received two Fifth Doctor Sonic screwdrivers the other day. Of course, that uh, one of them will be used in the uh, cosplay. I got a vinyl uh, record from Big Finish, a limited edition of Time Lord Victorious Echoes of Extinction. That's with David Tennant and Paul McGann. Also a CD and download of Silver and Ice uh, with Sylvester McCoy. Uh, We love to talk to collectors, and if you'd like to share your story and talk about your collection, why not be a guest host of the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast main story? Contact me for details at Podcast at gmail.com. You take over the microphone for the main story. Um, Before moving on, um, I do want to cover a few things about some previous episodes. And um, the first thing I want to talk about is... uh, the uh, episode of regarding classic hardcovers uh, that we just did with Tony Witt. So um, that's kind of important because we made a mention of Brain of Morbius second printing. That came out as a huge controversial debate on uh, the Facebook group known as the Braxiatel Collection. I highly recommend it. Great group of people and uh, some good friends there. Um, And the thing is, is that no one has seen a proof of life on that. Now, I had presumed, since I had discovered a bunch of second printings, that I wasn't going to doubt any second printing. Uh, The source that I have here is a book by Christopher Stone called The Unofficial Doctor Who Book Guide, which lists the second printing of of, uh, Brain of Morbius in 1978. However, I was made attention to another book called uh, Based On, I guess. And it's, uh, it's, 
I've been through a part of it. I don't want to go into much more detail on it, but it, it does also have some gaps, some gaps that I don't have, and they fill in some gaps that I have. They do not list that reprint either. Um, we are reaching out to the world of Doctor Who uh, collectors out there to see if you've got a Brain of Morbius second impression on your shelf. We would love to hear from you. Just shoot us an email at Doctor Who Collectors Podcast at gmail.com, or you can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Uh, also, if you've been through our episodes and you notice that episode 46 is no longer available, um, it is no longer available for free. And that's because of, of a dispute, misunderstanding with the guest. Um, that happens sometimes in the podcasting world. Sometimes what you think you're you think you're on the right track with somebody and it turns out you're not. Whether it was my fault, their fault, I don't want to point the finger or assign blame or anything like that. I just want to do what the right thing is. And in this case, the right thing was to remove the episode from the free world. It is now available as a paid podcast, um, and that is the Sarah Jane Smith Collectibles episode. You can still hear this as a patron on Podbean. So if you go to uh, DoctorWhoCollectors.Podbean.com, uh, you can hit the patron button and you'll have access to that episode. You could also uh, see the video interview on our Patreon page at DoctorWhoCollectors.Patreon.com. I probably have that link wrong, but if you go to Patreon and you can select Doctor Who Collectors Podcast, you can find that at the $15 level. So just so you know that that's what happened there. And so, of course, we are... Uh, I am personally responsible for all the content on the podcast. So if there is a dispute, I don't, you know, I don't mess around because we don't want anybody to feel bad and we don't want bad feelings permeating the Doctor Who world. On today's show, I'm going to talk about Doctor Who plates, and that's the plates you eat off of, not the or collector's plates, not license plates for automobiles. So that's a <laughs> it'll be a different topic. And uh, I will also be chatting with one of our frequent guests, uh, Miss Katie Haynes, who, of course, does a wonderful cosplay of the 13th Doctor and has some plates in her collection she's going to share with us. So be sure to catch the video on Patreon because I will also be showing the plates that I have. I want to thank our patrons, of course, on Patreon. If you'd like to see exclusive interview, including my interview with Katie, uh, you can go to our Patreon page and subscribe at the $15 level, like I just mentioned. Uh, I thank all of our patrons, including and especially the Doctor Who Target Book Club, of which uh, Tony Witt is the host and producer. And thanks for supporting us. Make sure you support the Doctor Who Target Book Club podcast as well. Uh, here is that link. I had it wrong. It's patreon.com slash Doctor Who Collectors Podcast altogether. And you can support us also at Podbean. We are a Podbean podcast. So you can go to DrWhoCollectors.Podbean.com and click the Become a Patron button, and that'll get you access to that episode that we took down. We are still in the process, hopefully, of raising money. Uh, we want to bring Doctor Who legend Peter Purvis to the Doctor Who Collectors podcast. We have to work with his agent, uh, he, of course, traveled with the first Doctor. There's not too many of those companions left around, but we want to take care of them. Our goal is a, is, uh, is a meager $271, and that is what the agent is asking for. It basically it kind of translates to roughly 200 pounds. And your sponsorship of this podcast will get a lot of reach, uh, since it, he would be my highest ranking guest to date. And um, just go to uh, DrWhoCollectors.com, click the Donate button, and you make sure you put Peter Purvis in the message so we can add you to the sponsor list. Uh, we will stop donations when we get to that $271 level. We're not trying to you know, raise money for us here. We're trying to raise money for Mr. Purvis. Of course, any money beyond that $271, we are going to uh, give it to Mr. Purvis as an honorarium. So there you go. Uh, our theme song, of course, is Who's Doctor Who, composed by the greats Barry Mason and Les Reed, performed by our friend Fraser Hines, who, of course, played Jamie McCrimmon with the second Doctor. So in addition to him on the lead vocals, you're not going to believe this, but you probably know from listening to previous episodes, Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin plays guitar on this. I know. I was blown away as well. Um, and... Um, you know, just just really, really incredible. And the uh, the way Mason and Reed uh, work together, uh, they've wor they've written many, many hits. And some of the other hits include "Love Grows as My Rosemary Goes," "It's Not Unusual," and a song called "Everybody Knows." Fraser said it's the most popular song that never got popular. 
<laughs> you can hear this podcast, of course, anywhere you get your podcasts, including Amazon Music, YouTube, Audible, Podchaser, Podtail, and Podbean. And you can find this all of, also wherever podcasts are found. And we are a Direction Point Network podcast. And you can find us at directionpoint.org. After a brief break here, we will have our uh, collection protection main story and, of course, the most outrageous offer, which we offer two today for the most outrageous offer, including a very interesting back and forth I had with one of the sellers who just was absolutely clueless as to how they're never going to sell this product. Stay tuned. Are you ready to travel through time with us? Then check out Traveling the Vortex, a Doctor Who podcast. For nearly seven years and more than 500 episodes, we've traveled from one end of the vortex to the other, making different stops with different doctors, reviewing everything from TV stories to audio plays, from books to comics, and more. Sean, Keith, and Glenn take you on a journey through 50-plus years of Doctor Who episodes and spinoff materials. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts, so be sure to check us out. And now, we're a proud member of Direction Point, a Doctor Who podcast network. You're listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. Keep collecting. Hi, I'm Juliet. And I'm Nathan. Experience Doctor Who from the very beginning through a classic fan's eyes. And through the eyes of a new Who fan. Reminisce and relive those classic moments with Nathan as he offers fun insight. Or experience them for the first time with Juliet as she dwells on social issues, history, fashion, and the size of a flashlight. We're the Time Streams Podcast. Find us on Spotify, Stitcher, or Apple Podcasts. You're listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. Keep collecting. Sad, Red, isn't it? People spend all that time making nice things, and other people come along and break them. And it's time for collection protection. Uh, always uh, wanting to keep your collection in its nicest shape as possible. And sometimes you can find great protection items outside of the niche of collection protection stores. So today I want to talk about protecting your collector plates, your Doctor Who collector plates. Uh, these are not license plates. These are the dinner plates that we're going to be talking about a little bit today. Anyway, um, the best advice I can give you for that, of course, is to keep them in the original boxes because they are actually quite sturdy. Um, I have a set of the Royal Albert uh, Doctor Who plates, uh, the five plates that came out in 1985, and they've been in the original, in the plastic sleeves, in the boxes. Now, the boxes actually were stored in a different location for many, many years, and uh, unfortunately, due to moisture, there's some moisture damage on the box, but the plates are fine. So it's the collectible value, of course, to me, is not that the box is in mint condition, because I don't know if that's going to be possible unless you, you put the box in plastic, which you could do, but the box is designed to protect the plate. Newer plates are usually encased in a styrofoam protector inside of a box. Those are also very good. But let's just say you bought the plates and they don't have the original box. Well, there's a great solution, and it's as fast as going to Amazon.com. I know it's a, it's the big the biggest big box online kind of thing, but this is where uh, you can find this stuff. Now, I recommend, based on reviews, the Storage Lab China Storage Set, hard shell four-piece set for plate storage and transport, protects dishes with felt plate dividers included. It means you can put multiple plates in one with felt dividers. These are hard shell cases. I would not recommend checking these on an airplane, but... Um, be ready, you know, basically exactly what you need to store and move your valuable china or collector plates. Um, and uh, you could also use it for china. If you've got, uh, chi if pe you know, I don't know, I don't have a set of china myself, but if you had a set of china, maybe your grandmother left it to you or your mother left it to you, um, this is also good for that. Um, you can, um, you know, basically you can handle it with confidence. A complete set with felt dividers. Uh, you get 
basically it's a set, so you get different sizes, but uh, you can also get individuals. If you just do your searches here, this, the China storage um, for dinner plates, which is pretty much what the collector plates are, that's a 12 inch wide by seven inch high, includes 12 dividers, that's $30. The set I'm talking about is $43.99, that's the hard shell, but you can find other options as well. Be sure to measure your plate's diameter to make sure you've got the right measurements. Um, there's also collector uh, protection storage for mugs for uh, and other than that, but just, you know, those are the best places for that. Um, and uh, I would definitely, you know, do that. You know, I do not recommend, by the way, um, mounting your plates to the wall. That's just... You know, I've, I've heard too many horror stories where the person did it, it looked great, and didn't realize that you had to, like, back it into a stud or a, um, or a strong, sturdy drywall anchor, and the plate was in pieces <laughs> the next morning because it fell off the wall. So I don't recommend putting it on the wall. I would say keep it in the original um, boxes as much as possible or these wonderful containers, the China storage plate. Um, on Amazon.com, uh, basically just do, I'm going to have a link to this product on our website so that you can, uh, you can find it yourself, but what a wonderful, wonderful thing to, um, to, you know, keep track of those plates, keep, keep those plates in good shape. Uh, of course, if you're looking to keep uh, basically a, a list of what plates were available, this podcast has a, has a pretty good list. Uh, how is Transcendental Toy Box? And just, you know, do a search for Doctor Who Collector's plates. You will also find license plates in those searches, unfortunately, because there's no difference. Collector plates also include automobile plates, but we're talking about the uh, the dishes. So um, that's, the, that's the storage there. Our uh, protection segment is brought to you by Bags Unlimited Incorporated, bagsunlimited.com for all your protection needs. Unfortunately, they don't cover the the plates yet in their in their line it's probably not a large um design you know de, you know large audience for that but however you know make sure your hardcover books your paperback books your uh trading cards uh your posters are all protected at bags unlimited incorporated so that's collection protection stay tuned for the main story up there is the scanner those are the doors that is a chair with a panda on it sheer poetry dear boy and now it's time for the main story. Today, um, we're going to talk about um, one of those odds and ends that started out back in 1965 as a result of the what I call the Dalek marketing big idea. And they decided to put Dalek on everything, including the start of collector plates. And so we're going to talk about plates today. And I'm not talking about license plates, automobile plates, but Doctor Who imprinted plates that you could technically eat off of or display on your wall. And so um, it, I thought this would be a great conversation. And of course, joining me is one of my most prolific guests, uh, oh. the, the wonderfully talented uh, Miss Katie Haynes. Welcome back, Katie. Thank you. Thank you. I don't, I wouldn't say I'm prolific. I mean, I think there are a lot, <laughs> there are a lot, there are Whovians who know every single odds. And then I would say I'm prolific in 13 yeah. um, and who over overall, but there, there are definitely, um, there, there are definitely uh, some, uh, some more out there. But because you mentioned um, Daleks on everything, yes, uh, yeah. I'm actually going to. I don't think my headphones are going to reach that far. No, they're not. Hang on one second. Nope, no problem. Um, one piece that I was debating about bringing down that I didn't, and I don't know. This technically doesn't count as. Um, this technically does not count as a plate, but if it's everything, okay. if it's, if it's anything that we're eating off of, that could be yeah. culinary. Sure. Um, sure. we have the Dalek sugar creamer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. His head, his head turns. You can put, um, I guess you could put cream or sugar. Oh, wait, there's a little, oh, this was made. Yeah. This was made back in, um, 2012 that makes sense uh, yeah 
I, I don't know. You you probably know more about this than I do. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's an official license. Uh, so um, yeah, and back in 2012, there was a. I mean, in fact, since the new series in 2005, um, I would estimate about 10,000 Doctor Who items per year or more. Oh wow! Have been produced. Um, but that's uh, but then going back, of course, yeah, the tart, I've got the cookie jar as well. Oh yeah, the cookie jar. <laughs> yeah, I've got the uh, the cookie jar. Um, the I think I think the one that I th- a lot of people might know is the spork. Yes, the spork. Oh gosh, look at that. Yeah, that's see, that's the stuff that uh, that's that's more of the newer stuff. But uh, as we go back in time, um, you know, we start talking about the the 1960 in 1964, of course, when the Daleks first appeared on Doctor Who, the overnight ratings were um, over a million viewers, which kept oh, yeah. basically get the got the show going. And somebody's brain started going at the BBC saying, "Hey, this is a potential money maker." So, uh, so for instance, you know, in 1965 they started doing things like uh these dalek pins this is from 1965 oh my god and uh there's actually a smaller model that i've discovered as well this is the uh two inch mo- three inch model oh. and there's a there's a two inch variant on this as well and it's a really cool thing you went to the you got your dalek pencils this is um an actual unused dalek pencil with the top of the display case that i was able to get a hold of and they did everything with um this was the first board game, Dodge the Daleks from 1965. It's complete. It's not very, uh, you know, sophisticated as far as, you know, there are no Dalek figures in there. They're just little pieces. But they took this right out of the Dalek book, which was published in 64. And the center of the Dalek book is this game, which you could do with cutouts and dice. Uh, but they just decided to put it together in that whole thing. So one of the licenses went actually to a place called J. Weatherby and Sons. Now I don't actually have these plates, but I have some. Very that good sounds. Uh, that sounds. Oh no! The, uh, yeah, I remember. I remember hearing about Weatherby's. They went yeah. out of. Um, I think when did they close? I want to say they closed. They closed. I I don't have any information on when they closed, but they know they're no longer around. Right, um, right. But this was one of the first, this was one of the advertisements for the Dalek plates. It included a baby plate, a saucer, uh, a porridge bowl or cereal bowl, and a, and a tea mug. And here, let's see, here's a better picture of all of those. Oh, my God. There. So these came out in 1965, and that was the first officially licensed uh, Doctor Who plate. Um, and then for some reason... Uh, We go 20 years before the next Doctor Who plates. Uh, They didn't do anything in the late 60s, nothing in the 70s. And so in um, a big year uh, for Doctor Who was 1985, because that's when the floodgates opened into the United States. Oh, okay. So um, one of the things that came out, now Royal Albert... Uh, which uh, did bone China there. before yeah. before we jump yeah, off of sure. um, before we jump off of dial- Dalek plates. I there is sure. one thing I want to do, and that is Go this, for it. this episode is being recorded on Sunday, July thirty first, two thousand twenty two. Yes, uh, all of Whovian kind knows that two days ago on the 29th of. Um, July 2022, we lost the incredible Bernard Cribbins. And I would like now I we knew Whovians know him as um, granddad, granddad Wilf. However, I did not realize and this was something my fiance brought up. Uh, for for any new Whovians who are listening to this, he was in a uh, film, yes. which I'm going to get the title wrong. Okay. Uh, what, what, what is it? Uh, you, you know this. What is it? I do. Uh, uh, he played a character named Tom Campbell in Daleks Invasion Earth 2150 AD, which is the follow up film to you see this p- poster behind me over yes, here. Yes, yeah. Uh, Doctor Who and the Daleks was the first movie with Peter Cushing, Roberta Tovey, uh, and of course they did a follow-up movie called Daleks Invasion Earth, and of course uh, Tom Campbell is the police officer. The very opening of the film, uh, you see some people who are getting ready to rob a store, and so they they have some 
you know, things that they're getting ready to do. And if Tom Campbell is a beat cop who happens to walk around, he catches them. And of course, they, they conk him on the head and he crawls towards a police box to call for help. And of course, he opens the door to the police box and you see a very surprised looking Peter Cushing, Roberta Tovey and Jenny Lind. I think it's Jenny Linden. I'm, I'm going to get corrected on that because I think Jenny Linden was in the first movie. This could be a mm-hmm. different woman. Hello, Larry from the future here. I didn't know this topic was coming up, but just to correct myself from the past, the actress in question is Jill Curzon, uh, the lovely actress who plays in the uh, Daleks Invasion Earth 2150 AD. Thank you. And he collapses into the TARDIS and they take off. And of course, then the the rest of the story follows the original William Hartnell um, story of Dalek Invasion of Earth, uh, very close to that. And of course, uh, Tom has some great moments in the movie, including uh, there's a scene I posted on our Facebook feed of the Robomen eating uh, eating their dinner, where they all sit together and they they eat and he's looking in sequence to make sure he's following it all. It's very funny. Um, and that movie is so the ending is so insanely funny. Yes. And it be, yes. Because of the, the, you brought up the Dalek plates in the Dalek game. Yeah. If you yeah. want to laugh, you have to watch the ending of that movie because it, it literally is like somebody just said, well, what do we do now? And they looked at the, it was literally an instance of how far can we throw these things? Yes. And it is, it's literally like <laughs> someone picks up a, a Dalek and um, just chucks it. Hot, hold it. And uh, there's a it great, is, yeah, there's a scene oh. where a Dalek gets crushed like an aluminum can. <laughs> goes flying back it is yeah it, it is uh, the um <laughs> it is one of the funniest things and i, I don't have i actually um it, I, I i'm true to 13 and then i don't have thir- i don't have alcohol in my house but yeah it's okay um, <laughs> coffee and uh oh boy here we go uh, right no there. problem so, so it's the the essence of um, life <laughs> Uh, you can't see it very clearly because uh, if, you, if you are watching this on the Patreon feed, um, here's yes. So oh, there you go. Here, <laughs> this is this is one for um, this is one for Bernard. We're gonna miss mm. you. I know you are. I I'm. I know you're reunited with your wife. Mm. Um, was, I know he was he 90, had, 93 years old. He, um, and. Uh, he, and I, you will see him one more time in the 60th anniversary special. He did film scenes for that. So that will be his his final appearance in Doctor Who. Um, and, and just to make one more one more um, reference to, we also lost the great David Warner um, not long ago. He, he of course, um, has been in many, many things. But uh, David Warner passed away uh, about a week ago. So he, he, yes. Yeah. Oh my yes, and he did. Was was he not in? Um, was he in an Invasion of the Dinosaurs? Hello, Larry from the future again. Again, had no idea this topic was coming up and had no time to prepare, but David Warner was definitely not in Invasion of the Dinosaurs. He, of course, played Professor Grisinko in Cold War in 2013. Now back to our program. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's also done many, many things in, in, um, you know, of course he was in Tron. He was in, he was in a lot of different movies. We lost him as well. So it's been, it's been. Oh, he was, a, yeah, he was evil in, um, in Time Bandits. Yes. Yeah. Wow. What Time a Bandits. movie. Great what movie. a movie. Oh, I, oh, I, I have, movie. I have a lot of things, but here's to them. Yes, absolutely. Um, and of course the, the right now you can, pre-order on Amazon, the collector's 4K Blu-ray edition of Daleks Invasion Earth, which by the way, includes, oh, an, auto- yeah. it includes an autograph photo of Bernard Cribbins in, in the set. So um, it's uh, for available pre-order on amazon.co.uk. Uh, you oh, we're not going to get it. Oh no. Oh, 
But, but like I tell my listeners, your Amazon login will work on the UK site. You'll just pay the uh, brown, the pounds uh, sterling, and they will ship it to the United States. Oh, they. So, oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I've got to wait because I actually. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm, I honestly, I may want this as a video because my, my fiance is so mad at me. Um, jumping off, pl- jumping, we're, we're going to go back to plates because I got we'll to tell this stuff. We're going to be, we're we'll going to be back, back to plates in a moment. Yeah. <laughs> but one of the rarest Jody Whitaker items out there uh-huh. is the 2000, I think it was 2015 or 2016 Funko Pop. Yes. Of 13 with her coat on. Yes, yes. And every now and then I will just dig through eBay. And again, there you got everything. These will go for a thousand dollars easily, easily, if not higher. And I I saw one that was up for 600 bucks. And you know how they say make an offer? Yes. yes. I thought to myself, um, no, and this was actually when Bernard passed away. So I don't know if this if this was a sign or if this was him saying, "Yes, yeah, spend you, you know you're spending way too much money." But I, I put in an <laughs> offer. I put in an offer for four hundred fifty bucks, and they accepted it. Oh yes, so yes. I will now. I that is you have the, one. that is I I it is coming my way. That's great. And, and on the one hand, I'm like I'm so happy. On the other hand, I kind of feel really bad because I don't know if the person realizes what they did. It's not your problem. <laughs> I know, but no, well, well, the truth, I mean, one of the, this, yeah. this essentially I got for free. Okay. And I might as well, I might as well show how I use, um, getting back to cutlery. Yes. Uh, I am that person who will not use um, this is actually the first time I've used the pint glasses. This was a part of the set that I got. Um, mm-hmm. Someone on Amazon was like, I'm giving away a bunch of uh, Doctor Who, you know, plates, not plates. Uh, the plates were a gift. And I will show you going back to the Daleks. But yeah. I used the, um, this lovely, lovely mug that I actually have the top to. Anything that you get with a TARDIS yeah. is pretty much going to come with the, the lid intact. And one of the items was the 10th Doctors. And the guy was standing there. Mm. And I'm like, I have too, I genuinely have too high of a moral compass to not say, do you know what this is? And he's like, yeah, I do. And I said, are you sure you want to give this to me for 10 bucks? Ah. Like, je- like looked yeah. him in the eye and said, you realize packaged, these are going for 200 on Amazon. Oh yeah. And he, yeah. Said, and he said, yeah, I just, I just want to get it off. You know, just take it. I thought, okay, I'm, you know what? I'm not going to fight you. Just, I just want to know that you know what, what's going on, <laughs> which is totally fine. The plates actually, and another one that I got, I think this was a gift. Um, these are the William Hartnell pint glasses. Oh which, yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, 20. Oh yeah. Cause this was, this was during the 50th. Yes. Um, am, yeah. am I, am I right in assuming that during the 50th, uh, we got a lot more? Yeah. The 50th is kicking up. And of course you're going to see a lot more coming out for the 60th this year. Uh, and, and that's, it's going into high gear, which to be honest, it's, it's actually making some of the old school doctor who dealers a little bit frustrated because people are getting into Doctor Who retail as a money maker versus oh. versus as a passion, and it's there's only a handful of people who have been selling Doctor Who before the new series, uh, right. and, that, and that's that includes Alien Entertainment, the Who Shop, and uh, yes, in always, Indiana. always. Uh, hello to Auntie Auntie Alex. Yeah. I love you, Auntie Alex. I mean, and and places that have been doing that for a long time in some places in England as well, including the who shop in London. So it's, it's been quite a, you know, and I was of course a dealer in 85, which, Mm -hmm. which will transition right into the next plate thing. But I I wanted to tell you, there's one sonic screwdriver you probably do not have. And that's the original spirit of light sonic screwdriver from 1985. Do you have that one? This oh no was the, oh is that from 1985? 85, yeah. Okay, no, this is um this was a recreate. Where am I? 
This is, it's just, it's just, it's a, it says license 66 on the bottom. Okay. This is uh, 85 Spirit of Light Enterprises. No, um, no, no, no. This, this guy is a god. No, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, he works, he works, he works perfectly, but yeah, no, so does, so no. Does, so does, so does. I, and, and I, oh no, you've got to, wait a minute. What? Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, it's not the same make. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait a minute. No, this is this is a this is a re um a recreate, yeah. Yeah, th this is a re Yeah, this that's the original. Yeah, no, that's that's the original. <laughs> that's the original. This is a recreate. I have almost I, um you could only get these uh these sold out relatively quickly and you could get you could have bought one at the 85 uh Spirit of Light convention or through their mail order in Chicago, but they sold out very quickly. Oh and my god. They, these were, and this one still works after all these, all this time. So it's really quite, I know we're off the subject, but that's okay. <laughs> this is, I do that. Doctor, it happens. You're, you're, you're on Dr. Who. I, like, <laughs> that, that's what's going to happen. This was actually a gift from my fiance. Oh, this, nice. this, this you can't find for love or no, money anymore. No, um, I had, I need to do a sonic screwdriver episode. So we'll hold, we'll hold that thought. Um, oh, and you need to bring, um, there are, I actually have, mm -hmm. um, now you can find there's, there's an Etsy store that I'm going to shout out right now. Oh yeah. 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 Um, Go ahead. Sonic. Oh, let's look at Sonic screwdriver. Not, not the replica. Um, we're looking for originals. Yes. Um, oh, custom who Sonics. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Those are going to run you anything that, I mean, those are in like the 200. Yeah. They build those to order. Don't they? Yeah. Yeah. But I actually have a, this was done from a dear friend of mine, George. Oh, and they actually, Oh, another shout out a uh, little shop props okay little shop uh, props they actually right now uh going for 300 a little over 300 is a replica of Derek Jacoby's bit um or Derek Jacoby's big finish ah. war war master uh screwdriver okay so that one's that one's gonna go up there this was the first time I'd ever gotten one of these it's gonna come right back Okay, no problem. Um, <laughs> We're going to venture into Sonics just for a moment. <laughs> and uh, that happens sometimes on the on the podcast here. We talk about a lot of things. We'll get back to plates in just a moment. This is my own original. This was gifted uh -huh. from a, my friend George, Sonic Screwdriver. Oh, I nice. believe if it's, I think it's modeled after or modeled on top of yeah, there we go. Okay. It's modeled, it's modeled on top of the eighth Dr. Sonic, but mm -hmm. to match my love of 13, there's a crystal oh, nice. set in the uh, setup there. And I find it incredible that, you know, Whovians are able to create and make their own. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Their it's, own Sonics it's because huge. these, you know, having your own and stepping into your own kind mm. of doctor persona uh and having this is just absolutely amazing but back on plates okay you had um <laughs> you had going back to dollar plates i feel that when these arrived these were a gift okay um and you have uh again where do, what do we got uh Okay, this was 2009, so this okay. would have been during. Yes, this would have been during. Um, yeah, 2009. Okay, yep. That is. No, that's uh, that that's Matt's run. Um, first of all, we've got this. The, yep. They come in a set of four, but one broke. Okay. Um, and inside, these are your typical cereal bowls, but yes. we've got a Dalek in oh, look there. At that. That is pretty cool. They're actually, they're really hefty. They're really yeah. hefty. And I was so mad that one broke, but because of that, and they're, they're going for, I don't think you can get them on Amazon anymore. No, they're, they're so. sold out. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to, um, the plates, however, actually let's, let's pull up the big bad right here. Cause, or our, our, our kablam. Um, <laughs> Because let's let's face it, that's what it was. Oh yeah, uh, and, and I do. I, I have mixed feelings about that episode. I love certain parts of it. Um, it oh yeah, you're not getting. Yeah, you're not. Ahead. 
Yeah, you're not getting, um, oh, no, it's not plates. I'm getting license plates. Let's do dishware. Yeah, that's the problem with the search. It brings up license plates. Uh, same thing on eBay. You put plates in there, you get license plates. Oh, you yeah. d- they do have a ceramic serving bowl mm-hmm. for 13 bucks. although it just, it has his name in Gallifreyan on there. The plate that I got, I want to be super careful with this. This was another one from Matt's run. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. Um, and I'll, I'll use these on occasion I, that this, mm-hmm. like, I do not have a full set of anything. Another one that I got when I did a purchase on Amazon, uh, what was this? Oh yeah. 2012. I was going to say 1996. That's not. Yeah. There a lot of stuff got produced in 96 too. So that's, oh, that's very nice. Oh yeah. Little Dalek tumbler. Uh, Dr. Yeah, this is 2012 again. Okay. And then all of my mugs basically revolve around Jody. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of mugs. That's a whole separate thing. Oh, mugs, that, yeah. Mugs go back, and mugs go back to 65. There was a mug included in that set uh, that we just talked about a little while ago. Uh, but moving forward to, uh, to 1985, um, the Royal Albert uh, Dalton Bona Plus Limited uh, was commissioned to do five Doctor Who collector plates in Bone China, and they were uh, exclusively made uh, from from this company and licensed by uh, by the BBC. So the wonderful thing, of course, in 1985, I owned bundles from Britain, which uh, was a Doctor Who shop here in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So we we imported these, and of course, as a great uh, idea, of course, I bought a set. So I have a full set of these uh, Bone uh, China. Uh, oh, plates. this one's uh, the boxes have uh, been in storage. They su- suffered a little bit of uh, water damage, but the plates are in amazing shape. So let me let me pull the first one out here. This is oh, William- these are the black and white. Oh my yeah. god, yes. <laughs> this is the William Hartnell um, plate. These these were limited but not numbered. Uh, so this was these were um, put out as a set. You got a three three doctors, the master and the Daleks. So let me pull these out here. They 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 came in uh, they came in plastic in the box, and the only way you identified uh, what it was is that on the box they had a number. Okay. So there was a number one for Hartnell. Uh, the second. Um, this is the. Let's see. Pull this out here. This is the Patrick Troughton plate here. Oh, that's so. And I've had these yeah, I'm just, yeah. Oh. So they're they're really, really uh nice. The next one, I believe, is John Pertwee. Yeah. And then they got, yeah, they got Davro, Davros on there too. Yeah. So here's there's John Pertwee, the third doctor. So wonderful. That is uh, really good. And the back, of course, has the Doctor Who logo, the neon logo at the time, which would have been with 85. Um, that was Peter Davison's last year. And um, I've had these since 85. So that's, they've, they've been through the many moves. And of course, the next plate is uh, Davros and a Dalek. That's that one there. So, and the final plate is, I believe, the master. Yeah, Roger Delgado. Uh... Yes, Roger Delgado. So you could, back then, you could order them, you could buy them as a set, or you could buy them individually. And uh, here's Roger Delgado. That is great. Yeah, the only the only one I'm seeing, I'm looking up on um, on eBay right now, there's, uh, they, all they, they only have one, two, and three uh, yeah. for 350, indicating use. That's, that's quite a, that's quite a price increase. Uh, back in uh, 85, new, uh, each plate was twenty nine ninety five individually, or you could get the whole set for a hundred. Oh which, wow! Which made it a lot more economical. Uh, I remember the wholesale price on a set was forty two eighty. So as a as a dealer, I paid forty two eighty for the whole set back in eighty five. And in today's money, that's still pretty pretty expensive. Oh yeah. But uh, individually, uh, we had I think we only uh, we decided uh, as a as a company we decided to just buy sets. So we ordered we ordered 15 sets of these plates and we only sold them at conventions. We refused to ship them. They're not in our catalog. Oh yeah, um, no, no way you could. I mean, it, it, I yeah. 
So we decided, uh, and of course, they all sold out. I mean, uh, Gene, I believe Gene took a set as well. And we sold the rest of them at uh, the various conventions. We had them in time for the 85 Chicago TARDIS, uh, not Chicago, TARDIS, TARDIS 22 before the Chicago part was added. And then we did uh, we did a total of 20 conventions that year. So in various locations throughout the Midwest, uh, we sold out of these plates and we did we did the set for a hundred and people were putting down their their you know we saw a lot of hundred dollar bills go if we oh yeah these. so that was that was uh and of course finding them today you just mentioned that uh just the one of course having that with the box makes a tremendous difference in the with the uh with the plastic as well, even if it's not sealed, I, I believe originally uh, they were not sealed in plastic. They were just placed oh. in plastic, so there is no there is no sealed or anything like that. That's such how they came. And uh, for a number of years, I know my brother kept these for me for a number of years. He had them displayed in his kitchen on the oh, wall. Oh, nice! So um, and now they're back with me. So that was the uh, that was the eighty five plates. Uh, uh, they're basically, uh, according to, uh, well, eBay, you said, th- what you say, 300 for one of them? Right now, um, if you go, if, if there are people who are looking for these, right now there is one seller who has the first doctor, the second doctor, and the third doctor, just the plates used for um, $350. Wow. So there you go. Yeah, those, are, those apparently, uh, they were limited. You know, kind of like the chess set, you know, there, there were the Danbury Mint put only a certain number of those out. And if you find one of those, that's that's a that's going to be a hefty price. Uh, the next plates uh, came out two years later. I do not have um, these or a picture of them, but we had the trial of a Time Lord commemorative plate in 1987 by Gladstone Pottery. It was a plate commemorating filming parts of Trial of the Time Lord. Uh, the original price was six pounds. So I, I've been unable to find any more of those. Uh, after that, uh, in 1988, and this was a, a, a big year here, uh, the Patrick Troughton commemorative plate was released by Seabridge Cer- Ceramics. It was a fine bone china plate marking the uh, death of Patrick Troughton in 1987, uh, featuring a quote from the moon base and a signature designed by B. Marshall. There were 1,500 of those made, and the original price was 16 pounds. Of course, uh, everybody knows uh, Patrick Troughton passed away at a Doctor Who convention in 1987 in the United States. What? Um, yeah, he. Uh, I believe. I believe it was Atlanta. I'm just basing on my memory here. Uh, but yeah, he went upstairs to take a nap and suffered a heart attack and died. And so they had to make that very somber announcement. And uh, on top of that, John Pertwee, who was his best friend, um, had to arrange to get his body moved back to England and um, and doing that. And so it was a very, uh, he, of course, he, he died doing exactly what he loved to do in his final um, moments is that he was with his fans. And when I met him in 1985, he was just super pleased to be accepted because his biggest fear, of course, was that no one had heard of him in this country, unless you happen to see the three doctors on TV. And I remember um, at, Tard- at TARDIS 22, we watched a, um, a screening of the Crotons. And after the Crotons ended, Patrick Troughton walked out on stage to do a Q&A, which was not on the schedule. It was just kind of impromptu. Um, and it was just an amazing moment. And of course, I shook his hand in the lobby. Uh, I, I kind of basically was standing there and somebody walked up next to me and it was Patrick Troughton. So I, I of course, said hello. And uh, what a what a very nice man. I'm glad I got to interact with him um, before his passing. But uh, they did do a commemorative plate. In um, in 1999, uh, they the Danbury Mint uh, did a Day of the Daleks plate. That's one of my favorite stories. It's actually one of the few items I do not have. I have got basically everything from that story except for this plate. Uh, the artwork is by Colin Howard, and the first in a proposed it was a proposed series of seven inch diameter plates. And the reason why I don't have one, and very few people have one, is the initial take up offer was so poor that they only made enough copies that uh, for people that pre-ordered it in the UK. So they said maybe 50 were made. Oh my God. They were hoping for hundreds or thousands of orders and they only got 50 and they said that's not enough to, to cover it. So they actually sold it at a loss 
uh, and only did 50 plates. So I've never seen a picture of one. Yeah, I'm not um, seeing um... that one. Uh, the original price, of course, was 19 pound 95. Uh, we don't have a value on it because I've never seen one. Wait, wait, I... wait a minute. This can't be real. Um, Day of the mm -hmm. Daleks, John Pertree story, right? Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we move forward to 2003, the 40th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And I do have one of these plates here. The uh, 40th anniversary uh, plates came in a box. Yes, those are actually, I think, yeah. if I am not mistaken, um, how how many of those did they make? Four. Uh, this had. Oh four no, no, I meant, I meant, um, I meant. Oh, um, how many did they make? Uh, let's see. I can find out because they, they are numbered. Because I think if um, two thousand were made for each one. I have Davros here. I'll show you the plate in a moment. This is the card that comes with it with the number. And then this is the plate. Because it was saying that you could find those on Amazon. And I'm like, oh. that's not. Uh, that's but these not are possible. still, you can still find these at Alien Entertainment. Mm -hmm. So they're they're still, they're not. Um, he bought a boatload of those. So uh, these, um, this one I picked up at Chicago TARDIS. So it comes in the box, and uh, there's four of them there. You got the Doctor, Davros, the Daleks, and a Cyberman. That was the 40th anniversary, and it's uh, got the uh, 40th anniversary logo at the bottom there. Oh, nice. So those were – but, of course, those were just for the 40th anniversary. But in the same year, um, they did um, – in you know, actually a couple – you know, in the same year, they did a few additional plates – uh, that went with the doctors. So they came in a box that looked like this. And this was the same company. And this particular plate, I believe, is the, uh, yeah, the sixth doctor. So they had the same kind of thing. They did 500 of each of these. Mm -hmm. So this was the card for the 500, and this is the, uh, the plate. Well, the next, uh, the next time around you see plates is in 2006. Uh, they have the Adventure of Doctor, the Adventures of Doctor Who plates, and uh, that's by Cards Incorporated UK. And I've got pictures of those I'll have on our website. Uh, these were a thousand plates. Each came with a box and a certificate. They were 30 pounds, and it features Christopher Eccleston and Billy Piper on those. And then uh, the same year, just a few months later, The Adventures of Doctor Who played second series, which is a series two image, uh, which has David Tennant. Uh, also a thousand units, each came boxed with a certificate of authenticity, 30 pounds. Um, the other plates that came out in 2006 include the Cyberman plate, the Ninth Doctor plate, and the 10th Doctor plate, all uh, each a thousand, each with a card with its authenticity in a box. So we'll have those pictures on our website. I don't have those handy here. Uh, also in 2006, we had the Travelers in Time plate by Cards Incorporated. It was a series one image of the ninth doctor. It's out of print at this point. And then we go to uh, paper plates in 2007. The uh, Gemma International UK has a pack of eight paper plates that were put out. I have pictures of those on the website. In 2007, October, by Euromark, there was a uh, paper plate with Dalek and Cybermen imagery, seven pounds for a pack. You can still get these on Amazon, I believe. Yeah. Uh, the bowls, the paper bowls, a Dalek with Cybermen, of course, also for £2.99. And uh, in 2010, we had the eight paper plate package by uh, Gemma International, Cybermen and Dalek, on two different designs which were £1.99, and those are still available on Amazon. You can still get those sealed and new. So I'm pretty sure I'm leaving out. Uh, a lot of the information I have comes from the Howe's Transcendental Toy Box, and uh, those are fairly complete. But if you, uh, of course, out there, if you're listening and going, wait a minute, you skipped a plate from 1982, uh, let us know, and we'll we'll tack it on, as of course, uh, at the end. But uh, collector plates were were kind of a big thing in the beginning, and then we waited 20 years. We did a big one in 85. 85 was a huge merchandise year for the United States. And then, of course, uh, coinciding with the 40th anniversary, the 50th anniversary, and you'll probably see a collector plate come out for the 60th anniversary. Oh, absolutely. There's got to be. There's got to be. When, when that 
uh, hits. Of course, uh, if you're if you're looking for these types of things, I would suggest you go online to the Doctor Who Merchandise Guide and get a Google alert uh, set up for that link so that if you will get an alert every time that page changes, which is usually twice a day, uh, because that's how much stuff is coming out. Yeah, the, John, the John Pertwee plate, that's pretty amazing because I couldn't find one um, out there. And that's uh, that's a plate that's extremely difficult to find because only uh, they basically went out of business doing that one plate. And that was it. They did 50 of them. They satisfied their their orders. Right. So 50 lucky people got their plate and then that was it. And I think the idea was they were going to do a series of plates based on um, different uh, different stories. And that was mm -hmm. going to be that there's so many, um, actually, there's a lot of projects out there, a lot of proposed ideas that were done and then abandoned. Yeah. Uh, there was my, the one I'm thinking of is the target, uh, basically the target book collection, which was supposed to be a magazine and a reprinted hardback of a classic target book with a behind the scenes mag thing and all that. And they sent out, they made five or six proof copies and then they decided it was going to be too expensive to do because doing a hardback book for a hundred run was going to run them, you know, almost $15 a book. And so they said they, they were not able to make money off of it. So a very few of those are floating around. I have, uh, I have one of those in my collection, the web of fear. Yeah. And uh, we just got four in uh, last week. Uh, yes. Yes. So the Androids of Tara, Stones of Blood, and uh, two other titles just came out in uh, BBC Target. And these are all redone um, books. The Androids of Tara and Stones of Blood were actually redone by the people who wrote them because the original books weren't very, uh, weren't very good, unfortunately. Oh. And if you, if you want to follow that along, uh, tune in to my friend Tony Witt and the Doctor Who Target Book Club because uh, they do a thorough review on all of those um, those books. In fact, they just did one on Shada, which was a novelization done by our friend Paul Schoons, who did it for the New Zealand fan club. This yeah, yeah, we got it. Yes, and, yes. Uh, but thank I want to thank my guest, Katie, for being with us. We always have a great conversation when she's on, and we'll have her on again soon. Uh, so thanks so much, Katie, for being here. Thank you for uh, having me. It is always a pleasure. Thank you so much. And you can uh, find Katie, of course, on TikTok and Instagram if you look for Katie G. Angel or Katie Gangle out there. So that, that handle will be on the website. So anyway, yes. listeners, stay tuned for the most outrageous offer. Hello, fellow time travelers, and welcome to the Doctor Who Target Book Club podcast, the only podcast to discuss in story order all the Doctor Who novelizations. My name is Tony Whit. And every two weeks or so, I'm joined by a two- to three-person discussion panel, including our so-called expert who's been a Who fan since 1979. That would be me. We also get the views of intermediate, casual, and novice fans who either have never seen the show or who have never read these books until these podcasts, including... Dalton Hughes. And... Alison Fitzsafried. You can find us on iTunes, Stitchers, or wherever you find good podcasts, or even ones like ours. You're listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast on the Direction Point Podcast Network. Keep collecting! You are invited on an adventure across all of time and space, in a completely random order. It's the Police Box in the Junkyard Podcast. Jump in the TARDIS with your hosts, Eric Goldbranson, Asad Khashki, and Matthew Kressel. Explore Doctor Who TV stories, audio adventures, and books, both novels and non-fiction. The Police Box in the Junkyard podcast. It's the entire Hooniverse. On Shuffle, the Police Box in the Junkyard podcast is a member of the Direction Point Network and is available about once a month wherever you find your podcasts. You are listening to the Doctor Who Collectors podcast. Keep collecting. There is no plot. I am being completely honest with you. And now it's time for the most outrageous offers. I have two to offer up today. The most outrageous offer is a Doctor Who item or related item that appears to be priced a little too high. Uh, even if it sells at this price, it's considered too high a price to pay. So I have a couple of items here that uh, came in. Uh, and the first one here is a new adventure novel called So Vile a Sim, a Sin, excuse me, by uh, Ben Aronovich and Kate 
Os Orman, excuse me, hard to read the text here. And uh, this is at biblio.com, as B I B L I O.com. They're a used bookseller, the first ones we've had from them. Both of ours are from them today. Um, they do offer uh, standard delivery to the United States in seven to 14 days, uh, but they're asking $160 for this paperback. And as far as the condition goes here, it says it's used uh, near fine. And um, I thought, hmm, that's interesting, that $160. So, of course, we do the usual uh, look around to see what are the other prices. So we went to Abe Books, and, of course, we found a copy on Abe Books uh, for $62.57. So that actually makes it the, uh, the lower price for that book. I would keep looking because uh, we also saw one on eBay for $41. Uh, that book, obviously, difficult to find. Uh, it is it is a book that does not have the Doctor Who logo on it, and that's when the um, the license was pulled from Virgin Publishing. So the last few books do not have Doctor Who in the title. Um, anyway, uh, so that's that's the first one. The second one is a classic hardcover, um, and it's Doctor Who in the Web of Fear. This is a second printing, and it's an ex library copy, and they're asking one thousand dollars. So course, I, I decided to write to the um, to the owner of the store. Her name was Janie, and um, she. I said, you know, this is a second edition, and second editions don't usually go for a thousand dollars. I've seen others, and she wrote back and said, well, why don't you buy one of those then? I said, well, I already have a copy. Uh, I host the you know the podcast, and I'm just trying to help and educate. You know, I'm not trying to take away, you know, your money or anything like that. But I just thought you're going to sit on this for quite some time. And she kind of wrote back something I can't repeat on the air. And I thought, well, that's interesting. So customer service not their priority um, there, but uh, it's still there. I checked uh, the other day. I have the printout as well. But Doctor Who and the Web of Fear. Um, I've seen the Web of Fear as recent as um, the last couple of months, and the going price has been anywhere from two fifty to three hundred dollars in X Library condition for a second printing of the web of fear so um again as always when you when you find an item that seems a bit high priced you know if it's a two thousand dollar hardcover or a you know one you know four hundred dollar paperback look around and see um what's what the deal is because some of these early paperbacks especially like the dalek pocketbook and outer space guide i've seen as low as twenty dollars I've also seen it as high as two hundred dollars, so you just kind of have to look around and get that, uh, you know, get that right price, and don't pay more than you can afford. Set a limit, set a budget, you know, those are the things that make a good collector. A little bit over time, in forty-one years, it's taken a long time to put together a collection that I really am proud of, and one day I'll sell it all off. You know, retirement comes uh, when it comes, so uh, keep keep uh, posted for that. Anyway, that wraps up the Doctor Who Collectors podcast. I want to thank uh, everyone who made this podcast possible, including my guest uh, today, Miss Katie Haynes. You can find Katie Haynes on TikTok and Instagram. Just do a quick search for uh, KDG Angel altogether. Katie Gangle, I guess it is. And uh, you can find her there. You can also find everything we do at DoctorWhoCollectors.com or at DirectionPoint.org. And keep collecting. Doctor Who Podcast Network.